Hello everyone and welcome to episode 18 of my Orc Shaman level 1 through 60 playthrough in the season of Discovery. Where today I have a couple of big ideas planned for this episode where we are currently in phase 3 and I have not spent a ton of time going for runes yet in my playthrough where I only have 10 of the 26 possible runes available as a shaman player and then with phase 4 that's coming out sometime in the future I want to talk a little bit more about that later in the video we can go ahead and E unlock even more runes hypothetically if they add more runes with that phase yeah. so i want to go ahead and go around the world and do a few different things to just collect a bunch of different runes i'm not going to collect all of them because some of them are like parts of dungeons that i don't really want to do or like some very 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 long chains that i don't want to do but i just want to start going for some very interesting runes and then i want to go ahead and maybe do like a montage or something where we go and get some of the more grindy runes and we can just unlock a variety of different things like we can use to customize our character and gain some power where alongside that i want to go ahead and reach level 50 of this episode which might take me to a brand new zone which i actually don't know where i want to go just yet maybe we'll go to Ajara that kind of sounds cool but we can just go ahead and run around all of Azeroth and try to unlock a few different things uh, where we kind of have some stuff in the Searing Gorge we could do if we wanted so maybe we'll head over there we have the hinterlands which I am very excited to do but I might save that for the next phase and just a bunch of other things so we'll see where our adventures take us but starting off with this episode I am flying here to the Thousand Needles to Free Wind Post because there is an interesting rune that I want to get located somewhere here in the Thousand Needles where I am using a guide to go ahead and get these runes because I don't really want to run around a bunch and try to discover and explore a bunch of different things. I kind of just want to experience the challenge that is laid out before us and we have landed in Free Wind Post and let's figure out where we need to go. Where I believe it is actually right around here where if we go to one of these bridges we will be able to see an item located on one of these rocks kind of like one of these like smaller needles that are sticking up from the ground below the bigger needles so let's go ahead and don't die and just run around this area and keep our eyes open for what we are looking for maybe it's that one over there uh take the northern bridge which one's the northern bridge that's what the guide says I love being up here because you can just see all these different cloud serpents and whatnot but it looks like that is the item that we need and that looks like a pretty far jump so let's go ahead see if we can survive this and it looks like we were just fine let's go ahead and dismount and this loot this weathered cache so we have to spend some time opening it and i believe there is just a rune in here which is really really cool and we got the rune of the alpha which i'm not sure which item this goes into so we'll see in just a moment need to go to see and it goes into our feet so this is our first foot item that we have unlocked first foot rune so engrave your boots with the spirit of the alpha rune infuses the target with the spirit of an alpha wolf increasing all threat generated by the target for 45 percent for 30 minutes limit one target if cast on a target other than self the shaman also gains loyal beta increasing physical damage done by five percent and reducing all threat generated by 30 percent for 30 minutes a target cannot have both spirit of the alpha and loyal beta at the same time which is interesting. So I guess I'll just throw that on there and I probably won't do too much with it, we'll just see. Where I suppose, let's go ahead and work with some items that we have in our inventory that I've had for a very long time, which are these strong harpy feathers, where we can gain 10 strong harpy feathers, three cloud serpent fangs, and one silken thread to create an offering to the wind spirit. So let's go ahead and just go all across the thousand needles, and we as a level 49 player can go ahead and fight some level 26 wind serpents, and we can try to get some of these fangs. And I guess I'll work my, oh, Cragstalker, hello. And I guess I'll work my way to the Harpies over here so we can go ahead and get that. And then we can maybe go to like the big wind serpent nest over here. But I'll just keep my eyes out for the smaller, like kind of lone wind serpents that are stalking the canyons here. And another Cragstalker, okay. It looks like there's a big group of them here, so that's nice for us. There's one of those fangs. So I'll just move this up here to keep that there. And another one, that's very nice see if we get a third one here nope there's one over here so maybe i'll try my luck here 
I suppose I should put my spirit of the alpha on the bar there just to have it on the bar. And there is the third cloud serpent fang. So let's go ahead and try to get two more strong carpy feathers. And then we need to go to free wind post and we can go ahead and buy a silken thread. Screeching harpies. I remember these harpies being very challenging when we were here several episodes ago and I think I died a few times to them but we are here now and we are very very powerful and we have out leveled them and we can go ahead and just demolish all of them. God waylaid supplies heavy hide which is nice. There is also the scorched screeching rogue feather here which I think we need a variety of players in order to get that rune there. There's the last strong harpy feather that I needed. So I have now collected the 10 strong harpy feathers and three cloud serpent fangs. So the last item that I need is a silken thread, which we can buy from Jandia right here. And we need a silken thread, right? Yes, silken thread. And that is now every item that we need. So now we can go ahead and head to the altar of the wind serpent, which is located just northwest of here. And I think we go down and then up somewhere. Let's go ahead and explore a little bit where I believe this is located up here in the Grim Totem Village. So let's go ahead and run all the way over there and then we can go up the ramp and across all the bridges to the bluff that we need to get to, which I believe is that one right there. I just really love this area, the Thousand Needles, and I always love coming up here and doing the quests to fight all the Grim Totem up here. And it's always just a fun experience even though the escort is kind of long and lengthy and we did skip it on this character, but still just like overall, the vibes of this area are just immaculate. But as we get over here, I think on the back side of this building, we can find the altar of the wind serpent, which uh, we can see right there, altar of the wind serpent. So we have a very, very cool kind of like statue right here where we can go ahead and interact with these three things and assemble the offering. And then we get the offering to the wind serpent where we can make an offering to the wind serpent and show your faith, which basically we will get a buff on our buff bar and that will last 30 seconds. And we have that 30 seconds to jump off the cliff to show our faith to the wind serpent. So let's go ahead, make the offering. We can see, show a test of faith to the wind serpent. And let's go ahead and just jump forward and hopefully we will not die so here we go we got some slow fall there and we can land safely and gently right there and we see in our inventory we got rune of decoys teaches you a new engraving ability which we can go ahead and learn this and if we come into our character panel here we see we got the spirit of the alpha just before this one but now we have the decoy totem which we can engrave your boots with the decoy totem rune summons a decoy totem for 10 seconds and with five health at the feet of the target that will redirect the next melee or range attack made against the target to the totem instead the totem also grants the target immunity to movement and parrying effects for 10 seconds which is actually like a really cool thing so let's go ahead and throw or we have to add this to our boots and then that will update our rune slot down there and it looks like this is an earth totem rune so let's go ahead and just use it to see it and that is a really really cool kind of like sound effect and like graphic and we have some cool stuff around our feet right there and this might be a valuable item but it seems exceptionally valuable in pvp so we can go ahead and just probably throw this over here and i'll probably never use it and it'll just sit there forever but now let's go ahead and go back up to free wind post and i want to take a flight path to Teneris because Teneris has a few runes we can get one of which i've already gotten but there's another one that seems really really interesting and super fun to get so let's go ahead and take a flight path to gadget zan but now that we have arrived in Gadget Zand, where there's a cool riding tiger right here and a bunch of other animals, let's go ahead and leave this area and head southwest into the desert. Where I believe at those bones right up there, we can go ahead and find the start of a special rune adventure. Where basically the objective of this rune is that there is an odd totem on the ground where when we interact with it, we will be transformed into ghost wolf form and we will gain a buff slash debuff that increases the damage that we take 
by 50%, which just means we will be taking more damage from enemies that hit us. And our objective is to basically run from one side of these bones to the other side without dying and to interact with another totem. So we can go ahead and try to find the totem right here uh, where we see this odd totem. And then I think this is the one we have to get to. So let's go find the other one at the, at the south end. And we can try to clear out this area a little bit maybe. And that would probably be beneficial for us. So maybe we could run around as well. Or maybe we could just run straight through. I'm not entirely sure. But there are definitely a bunch of enemies around here. So let's go ahead and find the totem down here which I see right there, an odd totem. Right, let's go ahead and kill a few of these fire rocks just to clear the path right here. Where we are a few levels higher than all the enemies around here, which is probably going to be beneficial for us. Uh, but we can click on this totem. Uh, oh, we just did it. I don't know what I expected. But damage taken while performing the totem challenge is increased by 50%. And I have a feeling I was not prepared for this at all. So let's go ahead and try our best to use our level 2 and advantage and to not attract any attention, which I've already failed, or as much attention as possible. And we're definitely taking a decent amount of damage. But I think we are almost to the end here. And did I do it? I think I did it. Did I do it? I'm so confused. I don't have a rune. Oh, it spawns a chest beside it. I see, I see, I see. I just died there because I was like looking away. But I see the chest, so let's go ahead and just run back up here really quickly once I heal. And I guess I could probably just kill this hyena really quickly because we are probably going to have to. Good thing I had some ox so I could use my reincarnation. It's very nice. Hyena is dead. Oh, we just got some smudge shaman notes. Uh, let's go ahead and skin this and then let's loot this chest here so let's go ahead and open this up and hopefully we are safe and fine and dandy and i have to click on it so there we go i got the rune of rolling thunder which we can go ahead and learn a new engraving ability and we can go ahead and find it here so it is a new wrist ability where we currently have your lightning shield now has nine charges and your melee attacks have a six percent chance to trigger one of those charges immediately damaging your target but here rolling thunder lightning bolt and chain lightning have a 50 percent chance to add an additional charge to your active lightning shield up to a maximum of nine charges Earthshock now releases all lightning shield charges above three dealing their damage to the target and energizing you for two percent of your maximum mana per charge released that seems really really powerful but so does this one i'm not entirely sure which one is better i feel like this is more like spell casty so like elemental oriented and this one is more enhancement oriented so i'm just going to stick to this now and maybe i'll swap over to this one at some point wish i just check the guide for my enhancement shaman build and it seems like this one is actually going to be better than the other one but i'm not sure how accurate the guide is because i've heard a lot of people say it's a really really bad guide but let's go ahead and just throw that on there so then we have that and i'm sure it will be nice and powerful for us but let's go ahead and run around to Nairs for just a quick moment because I have a couple of quests to turn in and then we can go ahead and pick up some more runes or I think there's like three more that I want to get before we start doing some of the longer grindier runes and kind of just some random jobs all around the world where we have broken pillar right here and we can go ahead and find this goblin NPC, Marvin Ribbit Seeker, where he gives us a quest where we have to run all around Tenaris and collect 30 Gazridian ornaments, which is not something that I'm planning on tuning right now and maybe not on this character, but I have this quest that I can turn in there. And we can go ahead and retrieve the stone circle from Marvin Ribbit Seeker's workshop in Ratchet. So let's go ahead and accept that, and maybe I'll come back and do that as we progress through this episode. But let's go now quickly go over to the Steam Weedle uh, port over here, and we can go ahead and turn in this quest, and we also have this quest we can pick up as well. Here at good old Steam Weedle port, let's go ahead and go into this building really quickly, and we can go ahead and pick up this quest. 
And then let's go over to the other building where we can see that we can turn in our Screecher Spirits quest that we did in Feralist last episode. And we can get a little bit of bonus experience from that, which is always fun to get. So I'll just turn this in and I think this will lead to another quest. And I guess I'll just go ahead and pick that up and maybe we'll do that, but maybe not. I might just drop it. But with that, I think I'm going to go ahead and take a Hearthstone or Astral Recall to Orgrimmar. So I'll return to Teneris probably in a little bit to just get some experience. And then we can go ahead and just continue with unlocking some runes for the immediate future. Where I have one totem in my inventory that we can go ahead and look at doing. And then I think there are a couple of vendors that I want to go to. Where I think actually I picked up a rune from the supply officer here already. So I might not be able to get it. But we have, oh I have not to the rune of healing rain which we can purchase for one gold and 80 silver and then if we go over here uh, this is unique and we already have it uh, we binds to blizzard account very interesting but bargain bush which is fun let's go ahead and pick that up because i think it's fun this is a really cool looking shore pad recipe that we can find right there and if we take a look at our bargain bush uh where does it go oh it goes into our trinket Oh, it's a trinket item. So this is the first trinket we have gotten on at this character. But we can also unlock the Rune of Healing Rain, which is a... What is it, actually? Let's find it. Here we go. It is a chest rune, which selects the area 15 yards around the target player and heals all the target player's party members within that area for 59 every second. So it's a nice healing restoration shaman rune which i'm probably just going to stick to overload and we can go ahead and use bargain bush and we are now a bush and we can walk around which is pretty funny and we can kind of like just disguise ourselves and hide around the world if we wanted to which might be kind of funny in pvp even though i think you still have a nameplate but that's just a fun item that we have where now let's go ahead and find this icon right here where we can learn a new ability after taking damage from lava five times reduces damage from some lava sources so let's go ahead and just throw that there and we can go ahead and go to the earliest place that i know where you can take some lava damage and that is actually in the dungeon of ragefire chasm which i've not done on this character and i did it on a stream but i think we can go ahead and just run in here and run to like the very early start of this dungeon and we can go ahead and get that damage and if not we can run a little bit further in but we have this area right here where let's just go into here and i guess that is not going to deal damage to us but let's go ahead and go this way where we might have to fight a few of these enemies here but i can also try to just like navigate past them where we got past the early enemies there and let's stick oh close over here maybe Hopefully that earth borer doesn't come sprinting towards me. And I think, where's the best place to do this? Where I think I might just die if, <laughs> if I just drop down anywhere, which, you know, probably doesn't matter too much. Uh, I think this seems like a good spot. Where let's come into here and we are now in the lava and we are taking reduced lava damage, but we are building some inspiration where we need five buffs. There we go. And now we can go ahead and use this to learn the relic and we will be able to gain the en engraved gloves lava burst which we have a ton of different glove runes but lava burst you hurl molten lava at the target dealing 556 to 717 fire damage that seems like a lot if your flame shock is on the target lava burst will deal a critical strike that seems really good oh i think this oh i think this is a channeled ability so it's like similar to our lightning bolt and maybe a little bit longer than that. So maybe I'll stick to Lava Lash for now, but maybe I'll just play around with this a little bit. But I think I'm gonna Hearthstone out of here, which I just used my Astral Recall. So luckily for us, our Hearthstone is off cooldown and we can go ahead and just get back to Orgrimmar like we just did a few minutes ago. And I think for one final rune that I want to unlock right now is I want to go to Ratchet and we can go ahead and go to the vendor there and we can unlock a rune from that vendor, which is a very interesting rune to get because if you remember several, several, several episodes ago, I talked about this rune, which I believe it is one-handed weapon specialization, which required you to do a very lengthy quest chain where you had to collect a bunch of items and you had to go to like distant parts of the world in order to get 
like the items you need to unlock this rune but they changed it in like phase two or phase three of season of discovery to just be a vendor item that you can buy for a few gold where they removed all the item requirements and questing requirements that you had to do in order to get that rune and you can just buy it now which i'm hoping that, that that's actually true and i'm not just lying right now and i'm about to get super disappointed but it's just a very interesting kind of change we've seen with the season of discovery as they kind of made like older runes more easy to get in like newer phases and stuff like that but as we arrive in Ratchet, let's go ahead and mount up onto our dire wolf and let's head over to the inn and just over there, which is a location that we have been to a few times in this series. And of course, Ratchet is such a great location. I especially love this like anchor decoration right here that's all kind of like rusty and has like some like seaweed stuck to it or like moss growing or whatever. Very, very cool. And of course, the rest of Ratchet, very cool as well. And I definitely love the inn here where let's go ahead and run into here which we have the scholar of exotic fauna that we talked to a long time ago which i actually am not entirely sure what this npc is for if i remember pro, i'll go ahead and do some research and throw it down in the description but we have crispy yeah, here who we can go ahead and chat with and we can buy the rune of dual wield specialization which we could still do the quest if we wanted to but i'm just going to go ahead and buy the rune here for three gold Glad and we can go ahead and learn this rune which i'm definitely going to go ahead and throw onto my armor because this is going to be a rune incredibly beneficial for us where we've unlocked all four chest runes now as well alongside our glove runes but dual wield specialization which is a chest rune will increase your chance to hit with both spells and melee attacks by 10 percent while dual wielding your storm strike ability now hits with both weapons while dual wielding and increases the damage done by your offhand weapon by 50 percent so this just seems super super powerful and let's go ahead and just throw it on there and we have now unlocked a bunch of runes i think we unlocked six runes so far this episode where i think now i want to go ahead and do a little bit of a montage where we can go ahead and run around the road and unlock some more runes and then we can go ahead and begin exploring a little bit of a zone as we approach level 50. Where now that I have gone on all of those adventures, I have collected a total of nine brand new runes in this episode, which means I have basically doubled the amount of runes I had because I started with 10 and now I have 19, which is just under doubling. And now I want to go ahead and begin another adventure where I want to go to a brand new zone 
that I haven't explored yet in this Let's Play series, where of course I have come to the zone and I explored it pretty much in its entirety, for, like, you know, not exactly like 100% everything, but for the most part, everything that is cool and important to see from a leveling perspective. And I want to go to Ajara, which is one of the higher level zones in Kalimdor. And it is a very interesting and unique zone because it's like a level 48 to like level 55 zone in Classic WoW. But then with the Cataclysm expansion to World of Warcraft, it became like a level 10 to 20 zone and serves as like the secondary zone for goblin characters and also just horde characters in general that I want to explore through there. And in the Classic WoW version of the game, it is a zone that is kind of barren in content where there isn't too much stuff going on here. So I thought it would be like a good time to come here where we are at the end of level 49 and we just need a little bit more experience to get to 50 where I can do some of the earlier level quests here. And then we could probably just come here really quickly for a brief moment later on in our adventures just to do a couple of the higher level quests just to pad out our experience a little bit. So we will just be exploring this place a little bit here and there, but it's not a zone that we will ever spend too much time in just because there's not too much to do there. There, where we can see that there are a variety of different stories going on where the biggest aspect of it is how it is a part of the old highborn society where there are a ton of highborn aka like the original night elves ruins all around of this map and they are now infested by the naga which are the night elves that were like underwater for like 10,000 years and have recently come back up because of Elidin's actions during warcraft 3. But we can also see some satyrs and some ghosts that other highborn ruins and there is some blood elf stuff going on here and there is some furbog stuff going on here and there are like stone giants that are pooping a special crystal that goblins and gnomes are trying to like harvest because they're like very powerful crystals which is a very very weird storyline to happen and there are just a bunch of other things where there is a small horde outpost and a small night elf outpost here in Ejara. Where additionally, and I'm wanting to explore a little bit more PvP at the end of this episode, I think, but a fun aspect about Ajara with how it is so barren in content is because a lot of content was actually cut from this map, where we know in the game files and from like developers talking about stuff that there was going to be a fourth battleground in World of Warcraft Classic that was in development where there was actually like a couple more I think but it was going to take place in Ajara and I think it was supposed to be like mobile like but we can see at a couple of different places in Ajara there are like horde towers and banners and then an alliance tower and banners on like the opposite sides of a mountain which would suggest that those would be the two entrances to that battleground kind of similar to how we can see like the Morshan ramparts here in the barrens and then we have what is it like silver wing outpost or whatever here in Ash veil so just some fun facts but let's go ahead and go over the south fury river where we are pretty close to the western end of it or northern end of it excuse me where it comes out of hyjo and then just comes down here through ajara and then between duratar and the barrens out into the great sea near the bay here by ratchet but we can go ahead and go across the bridge and officially enter ajara where we can see that there is a night elf camp right here but the, the night elves i think might be peaceful to us i'm not entirely sure actually now that i think about it but there is a quest giver here whom we can talk to and i'm actually like really interested now if these night elves are just going to attack me so let's pick up these two quests where we can basically go help deal with those satyrs and ghosts and i'm just for science okay it looks like they do not attack horde players on site so as long as we don't attack them we should be fine but we have those two quests that we can see we can do right here so we can go ahead and probably do those two quests turn them in and we'll probably be almost all the way to level 50 and then we could just do a little bit more stuff but i want to go ahead and head over towards the horde outpost here which i'm actually forgetting the name of it's kind of like a unique name but like very orcish and whatnot so we can see that there are some ghosts right here level 47 highborn lichlings and apparitions and then over at these other ruins are going to be the satyrs and i think if we go down to this way just for a brief moment uh, we can see that there are some stags around here but if we come around this bend along this road i think we will see one of those entrances that was originally being developed yes we can see 
two alliance banners right here leading up to a cave and we can see a little alliance tower right there with a banner which this would seem to suggest that there would be a battleground implemented into the game here and there is a hippogriff over there which is a very cool looking one but we are of course playing the season of discovery which means that they have been adding some new content to the game so there might be a chance with the season of discovery or with a future version of classic plus or maybe even in retail world of warcraft that we'll see this battleground implemented into the game which would be really interesting to see how that plays out in the future if it does play out in the future there's the other ruins with the satyrs and i just remembered another small aspect about this map is how there is like a very powerful mage that has a mage tower here with a bunch of minions that are helping them out and you can like talk to him for a couple of different quests uh there's like a class quest for mages that you can do but there's also like a variety of other different quests you can pick up as well where he is related to like the sunken temple which i talked about when we were talking about the sunken temple but there are a ton of naga around here so i'm just gonna try to like avoid them a little bit because the main thing that i'm wanting to do right now is to get to this horde camp where should we might get attacked by that warrior oh it looks like we just got right by him which is good and i think i went a little too far we could have cut back earlier but of course we have discovered valor mock which was the name i was trying to remember which is the name of this horde camp right here which is kind of a cool horde camp because it's very small and barren and we can see a couple of npcs here five to be exact where actually there's a six one over here with a couple of wyverns so let's go talk to him so we can learn a brand new flight path here in kalimdor and we can learn how to fly to a bunch of different locations and let's go ahead and come back over to the camp where we can go ahead and turn in this quest where i'm at 20 out of 20 quests in my quest log but let's turn in betrayed and we can complete that and then we can go ahead and do this quest wish is a level 53 quest and this is also a level 52 quest so i'm probably going to come back and do these in the future and i think now let's go ahead and go do those couple of quests and i want to talk a little bit about the season of discovery as we approach level 50. where the season of discovery is a piece of world of warcraft that is very interesting to look at when you look at it from a community perspective where i've touched on this a few times in this let's play series and i feel like it is a very big topic to talk about right now where just to put forward my opinions which i'll probably say this a few more times in the next couple of minutes i really enjoy the season of discovery i've had a lot of fun playing the season of discovery but i'm not a super hardcore person who's like really interested in like playing the game a ton and like basically like raiding every week and like having unlimited progression and always needing something to do i just enjoy running around the world leveling up a bit exploring some things and i also play other games besides world of warcraft like the main game i'm playing right now is guild wars 2 and i've been playing you know some world of warcraft and i've been playing other games as well and that's just who i am as a person and that's who i am as a gamer i guess you could say but there are a lot of people who only play World of Warcraft and who only play Season of Discovery, I suppose. Where because of the current state of the Season of Discovery, it is a very frustrating time for people like those people. Where basically, and we don't know the full extent to everything, but to basically kind of just guess based off what do we know and to kind of like speculate a little bit. The classic team at Blizzard that is working on World of Warcraft Classic is a very, very tiny team that doesn't have a lot of support based off of what we know. And uh, they are split between both World of Warcraft Cataclysm and World of Warcraft Season of Discovery. And because they're split and because they are such a small team with no resources, we see both Season of Discovery and Cataclysm in pretty bad states right now. Which this is kind of something I want to talk a bit more about in a future standalone video outside of my Let's Play series is about kind of like this issue or a topic related to this issue that is going on. But basically, like I just said, Cataclysm is not in a super good state right now, but more relevant, Season of Discovery is also not in a super good state right now, where a lot of the promises that were made about Season of Discovery haven't really been fulfilled, and I don't really care about too many of those promises because I don't care about weekly balancing or whatever. I'm just playing to enjoy the game and have fun as I play through it, and I don't really read like patch notes for games that I'm not super, super, super into, where like I read Guild Wars 2 patch notes in depth, but that's basically the only game I'm currently reading patch notes in depth for. 
But I think a bigger issue related to Season of Discovery with how it is in a stagnant spot right now is how I am about to reach level 50, which I have been playing in Phase 3 of Season of Discovery for a very long time. And that's because Phase 3 has been out for quite a long time and Phase 4 might be on the horizon but might be further down the road. And nevertheless, it has been a much, much, much longer delay between Phase 3 and Phase 4 than between Phase 2 and Phase 3 and Phase 1 and Phase 2. Where this era, this phase of Season of Discovery has kind of overstayed its welcome in the World of Warcraft community where people just want to be level 60, want to start doing level 60 raids, want to start doing like level 60 dungeons and doing like Altrack Valley and stuff like that. Which I completely understand and I think phase 3 has definitely overstayed its welcome even if I am just about to reach level 50 this far into the phase because I am definitely an outlier here where I've leveled very very slowly because I've been doing some hardcore let's play series as I've been playing this character and I haven't really been playing like my undead mage character too much anymore which I think I might stop playing that character at, like level 40 or something as I want to focus on other things right now. Where for our Let's Play series, we might reach a point where we kind of pause playing Season of Discovery for a little bit as I wait for Phase 4 to come out, but I have a feeling that it'll probably come out in like less than a month, which based off like the upload schedule, like this episode and my other hardcore episodes, and then the next episode that I'm wanting to do, potentially depending on the release date of Phase 4. I think we're going to be okay with consistently keeping up to like my current upload schedule that I've been doing with this Let's Play series, but of course things might change. But I think overall, Season of Discovery is just not in a super good place right now when you look at like player numbers and if you look at like queue times for like player versus player and if you just look at kind of like the community reaction on like the internet which is a scary place and like so on and so forth, Season of Discovery just doesn't seem to be in like a phenomenal spot which is very unfortunate for the game because it genuinely is fun and when you take all that aside there are a ton of casual players like myself that are playing the game of course and having a good time with it especially since like most people don't go onto forums or reddit or whatever it's just a very small minority of like actual players that are on those forums so of course you never get a full picture of an entire player base playing a game whenever you're reading through those opinions but they are still valid because you know some people are feeling that way and you can see some trends in the more like hardcore corners of the community but overall i've been enjoying season of discovery even though it is kind of sad to see it in not the best state that it could be in and I hope people have been enjoying watching this as well. Whereas I've been exploring Ajara and I completed a couple of quests and killed many many different creatures around here and got some leather and then went to some other corners of Azeroth just to turn in a couple of quests and to clean a couple of things up as I organized my quest log and whatnot. I reached level 50 which is the maximum level for this content phase of the season of discovery which means we're gonna have to wait until phase 4 until we can continue leveling up towards the big 6-0 which is the maximum level in World of Warcraft Classic which is really exciting to see that it is now coming on the horizon where as I reach level 60 I return to Orgrimmar to do a couple of things and I went to my trainer to basically learn a couple of new skills. And with that, I really wanted to do something special at the end of this episode, which is something that I've been wanting to do for several episodes now and haven't until this opportunity, because I want to play a game of a Wrathy Basin, which is the second battleground in the game where we explored Warsome Gulch several episodes ago, and I am planning on exploring Autrak Valley in the future. But the queue time for Wrathy Basin is basically like infinite when you're not like the max level in the current phase which is unfortunate for people who are trying to like level up and maybe do some pvp here and there as they quest and whatnot but now that i'm level 50 i have a better opportunity to get into an arathi basin but it was still challenging where when i originally tried to queue up when i first hit level 50 it was like a 34 minute wait timer but then i noticed it wasn't like peak hours or whatever so i came back later and it was an eight minute queue timer but i got in in a minute because i joined an arathi basin that had already started which that's okay with me it's a little bit of a quicker game and it was actually a really decent game where Arathi Basin for anyone who doesn't know is a battleground similar to the Warsong Gulch that we explored earlier but this is a 15 player versus 15 player battleground up 
from 10 versus 10. And it is a completely different game mode than the Capture the Flag game mode that Warsong Goch is, where Arathi Basin has five different outposts around the map, with the Horde and Alliance spawn on opposite sides of the map, and they basically spread out across the map trying to capture these different bases, and then teams that hold bases will gain points depending on how many bases they hold, where it's a little bit exponential, where if you are holding one base, you'll gain a few points every few seconds, but if you are holding all five bases, you will rapidly gain a ton of points and you will probably win in no time if you can hold all five bases for a decent amount of time at least. Where one team having like three bases and one team having two bases will mean that the team that has three will progress a little bit faster than the other team, but you really want to try to hold four or five in order to win the game faster or to try to come back from a disadvantage. Where the five bases around the map are the farm and the stables, which are kind of like the two first bases because they are right next to where the Alliance and Horde spawn, the farm for the Horde, and the stables for the Alliance. And then you have the blacksmith, which is in the dead center of the map, and then you have the gold mine and the lumber mill, which the lumber mill is high up on a cliff, which is really cool, and the gold mine is kind of down in a canyon, which is also really cool because you can see some interactions with like mind controlling people off the cliff of the lumber mill and throwing them to their death, which is really fun. Or you could like levitate down from like the lumber mill to the blacksmith to reinforce it. And there's just like a ton of fun interactions you can have with this map. Where Warsaw Gulch and Arathi Basin are actually two battlegrounds that I don't enjoy that much, so I'm kind of glad that I was in a quick game for this. Where I do enjoy Arathi Basin a fair bit more than I enjoy Warsaw Gulch, and I actually had a decent amount of fun playing this battleground, where I actually did decently well, but I'm not like super good at PvP, and I'm also playing an Enhancement Shaman, which I don't think is really meta for like PvP, but me being an Enhancement Shaman, that's not really great at PvP. I used to be good back in the day, but nowadays I'm just bad. But I actually held my ground, and I ended with like 4 killing blows, and 16 honorable kills, and only 4 deaths. And I think I helped my team out a lot with like holding the stables, and kind of reinforcing like the lumber mill, and the blacksmith I did a couple of times. And kind of just scaring the alliance away down into the gold mine, which I did for a brief moment. But when I joined this battleground, we were in the lead, and we were winning, and we stayed in the lead for the entire battleground. So where I lost Warsong Gulch when we played a long time ago, I won Arathi Basin. And I turned in a quest and got like 4.5 gold from getting like 3 marks of honor from Arathi Basin, which is really, really cool. But that is all the Arathi Basin that I was wanting to do, and I kind of just wanted to explore it to highlight it a little bit here in my Let's Play series. And with that, we have completed the Arathi Basin, we have explored a bit of Ashara, and I reached level 50, which is going to bring us to a close in this episode. Where I really hope you all enjoyed watching this episode, and I hope you are excited to see what I have in store in the future of Season of Discovery on my Let's Plays channel where I want to talk about a ton of fun things in the upcoming episodes. And I hope y'all are taking good care of yourselves. Remember, as always, to drink some water, check your posture, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time in the world of Azeroth. Goodbye.